As a community established on the banks of the Fraser River, transportation along and across the river was key to the economic growth and development of New Westminster. The earliest forms of water transport were of course the canoes used by indigenous peoples in the area. Once European settlers arrived, they adopted the canoe, but also brought their own forms of water transportation. In the early days of New Westminster and the surrounding communities, various types of boats traveled up and down the Fraser River, primarily transporting men and goods to the gold fields. Captains who owned their boats and pilots who did not took people along the river to stake a claim. Captain William Irving, who settled in New Westminster in the 1860s, was one of the best known and most well-respected BC riverboat captains. Once the gold rush was over, many steamboats were used for pleasure cruising, or excursions as they were called, and transported people to various places in the Lower Mainland for picnics, walks, and other recreational activities. As both New Westminster and Surrey grew, more people and goods needed to cross the river, and a more regular method of transportation was required. During 1883, a number of joint meetings between Surrey and New Westminster authorities were held to establish a transportation link across the Fraser River. The decision was made to commission a steam ferry to solve the transportation issue. The ferry's construction and operation were sublet by the Joint Municipal Authority to Captain Angus Grant, a man with considerable maritime experience. Grant, a native of Nova Scotia, came to British Columbia in 1882 with his brother Peter. Not only was he the owner of a merchant ship, the Cornucopia, but he was also the first native Nova Scotian to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Once in British Columbia, Angus Grant operated a construction locomotive as the new CPR line was being built. While the ferry contract called only for a simple scow to be towed by a tugboat, Grant went above and beyond, building a scow and installing a steam engine and boiler in the center. He also added paddle wheels and a wheelhouse with a cabin for passengers. The deck could accommodate up to five teams of horses and up to 20 passengers. Grant named the ferry after one of his friends, Joseph Sexton Kinvet de Kinvet. The vessel was known as K de K for short. J.S.K. de Kinvet was a wine merchant and a prominent member of the community. He was one of the founding members of the New Westminster and Port Moody Telephone Company, as well as president of the railway company created to get a branch line to New Westminster. He also spent time in Paris during the late 1880s as an agent for the provincial government. The KDK made its first trip on March 15, 1884, and it was the first commercial ferry to make scheduled trips between New Westminster and Surrey. The ferry had regular scheduled crossings and gave hourly service from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day but Sunday, when it ran shorter hours. With the initiation of a regular ferry service, owning a wagon and team became even more popular, since the combination of both these methods of transportation made trips into town much more convenient. As the mainland Guardian newspaper said in reporting the first crossings, a person residing in the city next summer can saddle his horse, cross the river, and ride to Yale or New York. The KDK may have been a comparatively small vessel, but its presence marked an enormous step in linking New Westminster to the rest of the Lower Mainland. There were times that the ferry could not sail because of ice in the river or mechanical problems, but despite this, it provided a reliable link between New Westminster and Surrey for several years. In 1891, the KDK was replaced by a larger steam ferry called the Surrey, which was operated by the city of New Westminster. It made its first crossing on December 11, 1890, and started regular service in February of 1891. At this point, the KDK was put on standby in case the Surrey was ever out of operation. The Surrey was a double-hulled catamaran with a paddle wheel in the center, which allowed the vessel to have a loading ramp on both ends. This also allowed the Surrey to be fully operational in both directions and made more space on deck. Since the paddle wheel was in the center, it was not as likely to be damaged by ice on the river, making it better equipped to handle winter crossings than the K2K. It carried pedestrians, horses, loaded teams, and various vehicles. Rates for freight and passage were a constant topic of discussion for city council. In 1899, the ferry rates for passengers were 10 cents for adults and 5 cents for children. However, there were different rates and special exceptions often made. 
doctors making special or emergency trips across the river to see a patient paid $2 during the day and $10 if they required a risky late night crossing. Family tickets were also issued. The Surrey was also a fireboat, the only one in British Columbia at the time. Following the Great Fire of 1898, the Surrey received an overhaul which cost almost $10,000 and the crew was trained to be ready for the event of another fire. The crew was considered to be firemen as soon as the services of the fireboat were needed. In addition, the Surrey also hosted some social events and outings over the years of its operation. The Surrey operated faithfully until October 15, 1904, when the new Westminster Bridge opened and ferry service was no longer necessary. While bridges have replaced ferry service in New Westminster since the 20th century, it seems that the tradition of ferry travel between New Westminster and neighboring communities may be revived, even just for a short time. In 2018, a new ferry service between New Westminster's Quayside and Queensboro neighborhoods is running from May to October. The q to q departs from Westminster Quay and crosses the river to Queensboro at the Port Royal Public Dock. It runs seven days a week at least every 30 minutes, with sailings every 15 minutes during peak times. The crossing takes five minutes. The q to q recreates an important element of New Westminster's past. It reconnects residents to the river and again links our neighborhoods through pedestrian mobility. The ferries of New Westminster ultimately provided the consistent link between surrounding communities until the construction of bridges across the river. New Westminster ferries moved a variety of goods, livestock, and people from one side of the river to the other. Since New Westminster was the economic center for the Fraser Valley, the work of the ferries was very important to its growth and development.